Okay, here we are, chapter two. Are you ready? Let me see if I can share my screen. There we go. Share. Let me find it. There it is. And remember, I checked this out from um, the public library. You can feel free to look there and check things out. Um, their ebook system is really pretty robust. Here we go. Chapter two, quills, just part of the job. Now, if you rem remember, he was trying to figure out who had killed the, is it a chicken we lost in the first chapter? Um, he was trying to figure out what had happened and when we left him, he was just about to jump onto a porcupine. It was kind of a short fight. Coming down, I seen them quills aimed up at me and tried to change course. Too late. I don't move so good in midair. I lit right in the middle of him and bam, he slapped me across the nose with his tail. Sure did hurt too brought tears to my eyes. I hollered for Drover to launch the second wave, but he had disappeared. Porcupine took another shot at me, but I dodged, tore up half an acre of brush and got the heck out of there. As I limped back up to the house on pincushion feet, my thoughts went back to the murder scene and the evidence I had committed to memory. It was clear now. The porcupine had had nothing at all to do with the murder because porcupines don't eat anything but trees. Drover had found the first set of tracks he had come to and had started hollering about coyotes. I'd been duped into believing the runt. Yes, it was all clear. I had no leads, no clues, no idea who had killed the hen. What I did have was a face full of porcupine quills as well as several in my paws. I limped up to the gate. As you might expect, Drover was nowhere to be seen. I sat down beside the gate and waited for Loper to come out and remove the quills. A lot of dogs would have set up a howl and a moan. Not me. I figured that when a dog got to be head of ranch security, he ought to be able to withstand some pain. Just went with the territory. So I waited and waited. Loper didn't come out. Them quills was beginning to hurt. The end of my nose throbbed, felt like a balloon. Made me awful restless, but I didn't whine or howl. Pete the barn cat came along just then, had his tail stuck straight up in the air and was rubbing along the fence coming my way. He had his usual dumb cat expression and I could hear him purring. He came closer. I glared at him. Scram, cat. He stopped, arched his back, and rubbed against the fence. What's that on your face? Nothing you need to know about. He rubbed and purred and then reached up and sharpened his claws on a post. You sure look funny with all those things sticking out of your nose. You're gonna look funny if you don't run along and mind your own business. I'm not in the mood to take any of your trash right now. He grinned and kept coming started rubbing up against my leg. I decided to ignore him, look the other way, and pretend he wasn't there. Sometimes that's the best way to handle a cat. Let him know that you won't get, allow him to get you stirred up. You have to be firm with cats. Give him the slightest encouragement, and he'll try to move in and take over. Pete rubbed and purred. I ignored him, told myself he wasn't there. Then he brought that tail up and flicked it across the end of my nose. I curled my lip and growled. He looked up at me and did it again. It tickled my nose, made my eyes water. I had to sneeze. I tried to fight it back, but it couldn't hold it. I gave a big sneeze and them quills sent fire shooting through my nose. Kind of inflamed me, don't you see? And all at once, I lost my temper. I made a snap at him, but he was gone, over the fence and into Sally May's yard, which sort of off limits to us dogs, even though Pete can come and go as he pleases, which ain't fair. 
With the fence between us, Pete knew he was safe. He throwed a hump into his back and hissed. And what was I supposed to do then? Sing him a lullaby? Talk about the weather? No, sir, I barked. I barked hard and loud just to let that cat know that he couldn't get me stirred up. The door opened and Loper stepped out onto the porch. He was wearing jeans and an undershirt, no hats and no boots, and he had a cup of coffee in his hand. Hey, leave that cat alone. I stopped and stared at him. Leave the cat alone. Pete grinned and walked off, purring and switching the tip of his tail back and forth. I could have killed him. I whined and wagged my tail and went over to the gate where Loper could see my nose. He looked up at the sky, took a drink of coffee, swatted a mosquito on his arm, looked up at the clouds again. I whined louder and jumped on the gate so he couldn't miss seeing that old Hank, his loyal friend and protector of the ranch, had been wounded in the line of duty. Don't jump on the gate, he yawned and went back into the house. Twenty minutes later, he came out again, dressed for the day's work. I had waited patiently. My nose was really pounding by this time, but I didn't complain. When he came to the gate, I jumped up to greet him. Know what he said? Hank, you stink. Have you been in the sewer again? And walked on down to the corral. Didn't see the quills in my nose. At last he saw them. We were down at the corral and he shook his head and muttered. Hank, when are you going to learn about porcupines? How many times do we have to go through this? Drover never gets quills in his nose. Well, Drover was a little chicken and Lopert just didn't understand. Nobody understood. He got a pair of fencing pliers out of the saddle shed, threw a leg lock on me and started pulling. It hurt. Ooh, it hurt. Felt like he was pulling off my whole nose. But I took it without a whimper. Well, maybe I whimpered a little bit. And we got her done.